Hello. Welcome. Um, welcome what, to what is going to be a very chaotic episode. Um, I just got finished doing tech for uh, the student 1X here at my university. So my head, empty. There are no thoughts going on in this brain. Um, so we're going to see uh, how well this goes. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Um, tonight, we're going to be making um, a flourless chocolate cake and brownies. Uh, because I realized I'd be getting out at this time, and I really wanted to just wolf down some brownies. Um, also, just to make it a little fancy, and plus, I have this left over from Wednesday's stream. We're going to do like a little raspberry sauce, um, quick and easy, using this jam that was on sale. So, I'm going to... Um, Switch you guys over to our vegetation station cam. Um, oh, good. You guys couldn't see that. Let's move the empty vodka bottle out of the way. Um, first, let's preheat the oven. Um, the brownies have to go in at 350, and the cake has to go in at 375. Let's do a compromise and do 350. Um, there we go. That's going to take, like... 30 minutes to warm up because this oven is awful. Um, hey, welcome to the stream. Um, I didn't realize Will was streaming. Um, can't believe we're competing now. Uh, um, so, like I said, we're making brownies and flourless chocolate cake in case you're gluten free. Um, and also because it's absolutely so delicious. Um, so I'm going to send over to vegetation station woo woo um like i said before if i make any uh bad jokes a that's probably just my sense of humor and b i've been in tech since nine pressing numbers on uh the light board so yeah we're gonna start with um let's start with the flourless cake because that'll be super easy um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab some bowls. Oh. Okay, let's take uh, these two. Uh, the glass bowls, they look so pretty, but they're the noisiest things. And I hate putting them back down together because they're just so loud. Um, okay. So, for the flourless chocolate cake, we're going to do... Um, here that out okay and we're gonna go to grams and we're gonna do um, 170 of these chocolate chips cool 180 uh good enough if it's over i i don't really uh, mind at this point um I just want to get them delicious, um, which they will be. I've made this recipe before. Um, both recipes I've actually made before. So I'm uh, fairly confident in how they'll turn out. Um, we also have a new tool. Um, if you've been following this channel when it used to be on Instagram Live, you'll know that I ordered the uh, Binging with Babish knife, well, one of the knives from the collection. And it finally arrived, and it's the most beautiful thing I've ever laid eyes on. It came in its own little foam packaging. <sighs> wow, look at her. She's having a little bald-headed man on the end. Um, this is my favorite, new new favorite toy. Um, we're going to do 113 grams, which is... Um, I have no idea how much actual butter that is, so we're just going to um, chop it up and uh, throw in chunks until we get to that number. This is a very bad comparison, but um, it cuts through butter like butter. Ha! Oh, I should probably uh, try this out first. There we go. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, 113 grams is the stick. Fun fact. I just looked at the wrapper. Yeah, 114. Good enough. Cool. So we're going to microwave that. Um, until it's all melted. I'm going to do two minutes. 
on that. And then, oh, weighing out the sugar. Cool, so I have that. Um, I'm also gonna chop up this chocolate bar and uh, throw it in the bowl over there. I'm incredibly glad that uh, Will sent you over. He and I have known each other uh, since we were both deep in the closet. So uh, that goes <laughs> to show you how, how long we've known each other. Um, like middle of high school. I think he was a freshman and I was like a junior. Um, so a long time. Uh, so I'm kind of doing two recipes here at once. Um, 170 grams of the chocolate. So let's start chopping this up so we can get to our magical number of 170. Um, oh, look at that, 170. Um, this is going to probably be eaten by me throughout the course of the show tonight. Oh yeah, perfect, melted. Um, we're going to put this over in another bowl for now, and we'll get back to that in a hot second. I'm gonna move this away. Um, use our rubber spatula to give it a little stir. Um, we just wanna kinda incorporate this and then we'll go ahead and add uh, the sugar, salt, and vanilla in this recipe. Um, I've been so incredibly busy this week, I didn't have time uh, to make a website for this show. I did really want to, and I'm still going to, I'm just trying to find like the best way to do this um, because I want to give credit to the people who made these recipes um, and also just have a nice little place of where you could find all the recipes I've made. Um, and plus, I have some of my own recipes that I've tweaked over the years. Oh, did I just spill chocolate everywhere? Cool. Um, okay, so we're going to do Trouble Is Now. I have to remember which recipe I'm doing. Um, and this is for the flourless chocolate cake. Um, like I said at the top of the stream, head empty, no thoughts. Okay. All right, zero that out. Uh, 149. Oh boy, that's not gonna be a uh, big enough. So, using all the brain cells tonight. Um, The shows we're doing is uh, one called, oh, I should have looked this up before I said this, um, Insufficiency, I know is one. I know that for a fact. Okay. Uh, that was 65 grams. Um, insufficiency and then With This Ring. Both are really fun. They're both one acts. Um, obviously, this is the student-directed one acts. Uh, one is directed by one of my favorite humans, uh, Corey Ligon, or Ligon. Um, and also features a lot of my friends who I take classes, theater classes with as the cast. Um, and I do the light board, um, and the light board ops, which is, uh, really fun because all I do for the entire show is hear a person say, let's see 120 at 40. No, I don't like that. Let's go back. And then, uh, I set it and then night of the show, I just press play when I hear, uh, the stage manager say, light cue, blah, 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 I hit the button that says, play, blah, blah, blah. And I can't wait. All right, so this is the uh, one, ooh, I had 170 on the brain. This is actually supposed to be 149. So I'm just gonna scoop out a bit. Uh, there we go. Um, I was actually talking about this stream today because we were, uh, I was talking with the person who runs like the shop where they build all the things. And he was like, yeah, you know, sometimes I like to have conversations with myself while I'm welding. 
And I was like, oh, cool. I just kind of scream internally at the white hot flame that I'm in control of. Um, and the apron I'm wearing is actually a welding apron that I had to purchase for my uh, sculpture class that had some welding in it. It was either that or the welding jackets. And I'm a big man and didn't fit in the welding jacket. Um, so I had to get this. And now it's my art apron and has since turned into my cooking apron. And it's great because I can just take things out of the oven with this. Okay, so we're gonna put that in there. Uh, that bowl is gonna be kind of our measuring bowl. Um, so there. Then. Um, I might switch to a whisk. Mm, no, I've already committed. Uh, I'm also trying to cool this down because we're going to add eggs to it. Um, and I don't want the eggs to cook uh, when they hit this hot chocolate mixture. Um, so I'm also going to add the salt and vanilla to this. And the... Um, oh, we're adding everything, basically. So I'm going to add uh, my espresso powder, my vanilla, which is in one of these cabinets. Mm. Oh, I took it out already because I'm that smart and that cool. Ooh, that's a little stuck to the counter. Um, a teaspoon of both espresso and vanilla. Um, I have a bad habit, habit of not measuring my vanilla. Um, you can't really add too much vanilla. Um, and if you do, I mean, you've gone through the whole bottle. You have bigger problems to worry about. Um, the espresso powder is a bit strong, so I'm just going to measure that just to be on the safe side. If you want to make this recipe your own, one teaspoon is going to give the chocolate some depth and make it taste more chocolatey. Um, I don't understand how that works, but it does. Trust me. Um, two will make it into this kind of light mocha-y flavor, which is what we're going for tonight. Um, yeah. So this is just instant espresso or instant coffee. Um, that'll dissolve nicely. You don't want to use, uh, coffee grounds in this because then it'll end up real gritty. Um, which isn't a flavor profile that I particularly look for. Uh, salt. Cool. So we're also going to do, um, a teaspoon, nope, a quarter of a teaspoon of our salt. Just going to kind of scoop in there. There we go. Put the salt over on the side. I think that's it. Oh, the eggs, which I'm missing because I left them in the fridge. So, um, chat, watch the bowl as I uh, go to get eggs and try not to shake my entire setup. I'll have to post a picture of my setup on, uh, so, uh, my Instagram, because it is uh, a cavalcade, a cacophony of wires, just crisscrossing my very tiny kitchen. I'm also gonna grab um, myself a drink while I'm here, because I don't wanna keep doing that. Uh, I'm gonna grab myself a large cup. Now I know what this is gonna sound like. And no, I'm not doing that in my kitchen. It's the ongoing joke of me and my roommate that um, our comfort place to pee is in the kitchen because of how this sounds. There we go. Remember, hydration is important, especially if you've only had um, a Red Bull and a coffee for liquid like me don't be like me okay um just grabbing the eggs oh you can already smell the espresso it smells delightful um really waking me up okay so there's gonna be gonna be three eggs 
I'm going to grab a uh, cup because I always worry about cracking an egg or I guess a glass will work. Um, I always worry about cracking an egg and shells getting in there in like the main bowl. Um, so I'm going to crack it into this glass here. Oh, chocolate and coffee just smell so delicious together. Um, I'm just going to kind of look and make sure there are no shells and then add it in. Ooh, yay, our oven preheated. It's always a guessing game with that oven. Um, I live in a dorm, so they're incredibly unreliable. I mean, you can set that oven to like preheat to 350 and it'll take an hour, but you set that thing to preheat to like 450 and it'll be in 10 minutes. It'll be like, I'm ready. Um, just an air bubble. I thought that was a piece of shell, but it's not. All right, into the drink you go. And our last egg. Um, okay, that's just a bit of white. Also in there. Make sure I don't drink from that glass later tonight. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to kind of gently poke the yolks so that they can uh, break up easier. We're gonna mix all this in together. This is gonna be a little difficult because we're mixing a very fatty mixture with the uh, chocolate and uh, a very butter uh, into a very watery mixture, which is like the whites of the egg. Um, it's gonna take a second to come together. Then, oh, one more ingredient that I almost forgot. Uh, Where'd I put it? Oh, hey, I put it right here. Look at me go. Uh, we're gonna do 43 grams of our cocoa powder. Um, this is Dutch processed. Oh, mixed with natural cocoa. Cool, all right, whatever. Um, yeah, you're just gonna use cocoa powder for this. I forgot what recipe I did that called for like specifically Dutch processed. Um, I don't remember. 43. Okay. 44. Wow. Pretty damn good at this measuring thing. Whew. Um, I have a little hand sieve that I'm going to um, sift the cocoa powder with. Just because I know there's going to be, oh boy, little itty bitty grains. Whatever I catch in here. Okay. There we go. Okay. I'm sure that noise is uh, delightful. I'm going to try to sift through this faster. I just don't want the lumps and clumps to be in a... Uh, that yeah there's all those little lumps and clumps and bad bits going to be catapulted into the sink um yeah all right now i'm going to mix all this in together be careful because we're kind of uh getting a little too big for the bowl so um once i mix this we're going to go back over to our wonderful face cam or no, I'm going to teach you some arts and what's going to be arts and crafts time right here. Um, tonight, we don't have any vegetation to uh, use at our station, um, but I just like the name so darn much because it, it rhymes. So if you ever hear me referring to the vegetation station or uh, face cam over there, now you know which one's which. I forgot I uh, planned a stream tonight um, because I watched one of my comfort TV shows, uh, which is Doctor Who. Absolutely love it. Um, my aunt, who is a loyal follower of uh, Wicked Kitchen, got me hooked on it when I was like 13 years old and uh, loved it ever since. And I realized it's on HBO Max. So I was like, oh, I can't believe that I have to watch every single episode. 
Um, so I have been. I'm on, like, beginning of season two. I just finished uh, the new Earth episode where uh, the cat sisters, uh, in fact, like, grow their own humans to infect. It's like the, the first actual episode with uh, David Tennant, who's my personal favorite. I have his sonic screwdriver, and then I also have uh, Eleven's. Okay, so that, I'm going to move this over to uh, the other side of the kitchen. Cool. I'm also going to take a sip of water. Okay, so craft time. We are going to be baking our cake in this lovely cake tin. Um, so, there we go. Okay, a rectangular piece of parchment, and uh, we're going to turn that into a lovely little circle. So, we're going to take our scissors, and we're going to fold this in half. And in half again. And then we're going to take it corner to corner like this. And we're just going to... Well, not corner to corner. We're going to fold this. This is the corner we care most about. And we're going to do it uh, again. Folding in that corner. Boy, if I can get it. There we go. Till you made this lovely shape. Ain't it pretty? Um, and now we're going to flip our pan over and measure from generally the middle to uh, the end. So about right there. Um, and we're going to cut right about there. I'm going to do a fancy little pattern because I think that would be fun. Um, so if we did this correctly, and like nine times out of ten I do, we have a neat little thing that'll fit beautifully in the bottom of the parchment, uh, bottom of the cake pan. Beautiful. Craft. Done. Um, and then you also have this, which uh, you can, I don't know, give, give to your dog or your mom as a gift and she can hang it up on the fridge. I'm not going to do that. So there we go. Um, if you didn't have parchment, um, instead of flour, I'd probably go ahead and dust with, uh, cocoa powder, uh, because this is a flourless chocolate cake and, uh, cocoa would kind of work the, in the same way that the flour does. Uh, oh boy. So fun fact about this camera, every 30 minutes it shuts off for what reason? I don't really know. Um, yeah. So that's what just happened. Oh, yeah, batter. Duh. Okay. We did this in the right order. I didn't do it in the right order. Um, all right. I'm going to take this and just pour it in. Nice and chocolatey. Um, if you wanted to add a little extra something, something. Now would be the time to do so. Uh, a little something, something meaning uh, peanut butter, uh, some mint extract, uh, other thing, peeps maybe, possibly. I'm not a peeps fan, but you know, some people are freaky like that. Okay, and we're just gonna kind of uh, spread, oh boy, uh, spread this around. Um, trying to get it into a circular shape rather than amoeba. And uh, you, legally, you have to taste test for quality control. Oh. Oh, hell yeah. Really good. Um, although I did add the extra espresso powder, um, it's not It doesn't taste like coffee. It just gives that the chocolate a deeper flavor it's more of a huh than like a oh that's just chocolate i'm gonna uh, wash my chocolatey hands for a second
There we go. Oh, I still left the water on. All right. There we go. Okay, uh, I'm going to put this in the oven. Um, I'll show you guys again my beautiful face, just in case you forgot. Um, once my thing loads. Hi, my beautiful face right here. Um, so this is going to go in for about 25 minutes. Um, and then we'll start the brownies. All right. We go. And our beautiful, sexy assistant is going to uh, take care of keeping time for us. Alexa, dear, set a cake timer for th uh, 25 minutes. So hard to find good help these days. Alexa, start a cake timer for 25 minutes. Sorry, something went wrong. Um, I actually have two of these. So, I've named them. This one's Janet, and the one in my living room is named um, Helen. Helen heard us, so she's going to... Um, we're going to hear a very faint beeping rather than a very loud beeping. Um, so... Brownies. We're gonna clean up a little bit. Just a little bit, not a lot. We have to chop this chocolate. Like I said, it's gonna be a little bit of a chaotic episode because my brain's kind of only working at half. Oh, I didn't even switch the camera. You guys, you guys didn't tell me. Really? Wow. Uh, ooh, I almost pressed the title card. So, back over to Vegetation Station. Uh, we're just going to chop this chocolate. Uh, chop it up a little bit. Um, I'm just kind of working my way through the half a bar. Um, there we go. Okay. And then I'll just work my way through uh, that way towards the bowl. And I'm just going to go back because I saw some bigger chunks. Um, I'm not a fan of doing this. However, my um, bench scraper is in the dishwasher currently. And uh, it's very dirty in there. So I'm just going to use my knife, which I absolutely hate doing. Because my culinary teacher back in high school was uh, told us this horror story about how a person was doing this and went a little too hard um, holding it or something, um, and just absolutely sliced their hand. Um, and I have been horrified of doing that same thing, um, every time. So I upgraded myself to a bench scraper, um, which I call with a very bad Scottish accent, my wee bench scraper. Um, I can't believe I just, yeah. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Um, but it's currently dirty in the dishwasher. So I'm just going to break these down into smaller pieces. Um, if you have hot hands like I do, these are going to start to melt. You don't have to really worry about that. Just, uh, work with some, uh, gusto and some speed. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing. We did it in the kind of strips. We're going to work our way back. Um, rough chop. We don't have to get precise uh, about how we chop our chocolate. Oh boy, my uh, butter has to be melted. So, give me one second. Oh boy. Yeah, see if you have hot little hands like I do, you get uh, melty chocolate all over your fingers. So, we're going to work with some paste. Um, and just... Really go for it. Um, I'm keeping my fingers way back because I know this is a very, very sharp knife. Um, and I totally don't want to um, go to the hospital. Uh, or, well, get a pretty nasty 
cut on my finger. Luckily, in the 10 episodes on uh, the other show that I do, Kitchen Time, um, we haven't had any hospital-worthy injuries, although my partner in crime, who I do the show with, has burned herself. And broken the holiday sauce, which is a crime in and of itself. But no hospital worthy. Um, what's that? Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, no hospital worthy antics. Um, I'm going to wash again my chocolatey hands. Okay, uh, so my recipe that I'm using, uh, this recipe is actually, this is uh, courtesy of the same guy who made the knife I'm using tonight, uh, good old Babby, good old binging with Babish, let me see if I can grab my butter, oh I can't, alright, um, good old binging with Babish himself, uh, this recipe is his melty brownies. Which are the best kind. Nice ooey and gooey. They kind of have to set for a bit because they're just so melty. They're going to be absolutely delicious. Um, when I had no self-control, I have a little bit of self-control now, but when I had no self-control, um, I would just demolish this whole thing. This would be gone. But I'm going to be nice and make sure I save some. For uh, the people I like that are in the cast uh, for Monday when we go into tech rehearsal. Oh, so to melt that butter, all I'm going to do is uh, chuck the butter in a nice little coffee cup and uh, throw it in the microwave. I'm just going to cut this down a bit to uh, fit because that just looks rather silly. Also, taking the wrappers off would help. Okay, this butter is... I just pulled this stick of butter from the freezer. Uh, and this one's from... I took out at the beginning of the show. We're going to take that. Um, there we go. Just take it in the chunks. I'm cutting the... I'm going to cut it into thirds. That's what I'm going to deem good enough. I don't know how oh, I thought that was going to work. Um, we'll leave those two pieces out. And then when it gets all nice and melty, it's going to give us some room. Eggs are going to go over there. Um, in, oh, they don't have enough room. In, oh, no. Okay, still don't have enough room. There we go. Into the microwave you go. Um, we're going to get this nice and melted. Uh, I have 16 seconds left on the thing I used to melt the chocolate with, so we're just gonna go with that. I'm gonna take a bit of that chocolate now. Mm. Okay. Mm. That is nothing. So we're just going to do it in 30 second bursts. Well, we'll do it for a minute. See what happens. And continue on from there. Hmm. Now... 
if you hear it bubbling and popping and hissing at you, don't worry about it. It's lying. All right, we're going to stuff down our butter. Let's make room for more butter in the butter cup. Um, I'm going to let that go for the full 30 seconds. I can probably get the uh, next ingredients ready. Okay. All right. So we're going to uh, stir this up and uh, let the heat from the butter kind of melt the rest of it itself. So. 350 grams of sugar. I'm gonna go directly from the bag. Uh, oh, I should probably turn this on. That would help. Oh, and I'll turn it the right way. Okay. Hold on, it's unsteady. This happens. There we go. Okay, so 350 grams of the sugar. Three hundred and fifty. Okay, this is making sure. Three twenty-five. Three thirty forty something. Oh, 49. 350. We nailed it. Okay. So uh, we're going to add this and ooh, whatever's left of the cocoa powder that's in there. doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to give this one more spin in uh, the microwave just for like 20 seconds. Good enough. All right, I'd say our butter is thoroughly melted. If not, uh, it won't be much of a worry. Uh, oh wow, that's a big old chunk. Uh, um, I'm gonna put it back in for mm, 20 more seconds. We'll see, we'll see if it's uh, really popping and hissing and spitting at us. So. Um, butter and the sugar it's going to go in here and along with the chocolate and then we're going to do uh, four eggs and then two yolks from those same eggs and uh, 80 grams of our cocoa okay uh, I'm just going to go for the full 40 I didn't hear it sizzling and popping at me so I'm going to assume it still has some okay 80 grams cocoa. Eighty. Okay, that's sixty. Seventy. Oh boy. There we go. Seventy-seven. Oh. Seventy-two. There we go. Okay. Cool. Take that. Yeah, that'll, that'll, it's plenty melted. Um, oh yeah, perfect, okay. So this butter is gonna melt the chocolate, uh, which is what we want. Oh, some butter chunks fell out, but it's all right. Um, I'm gonna use a different whisk, a different uh, 
implement tool than I used before. Um, I'm going to use, if I can find it, um, oh, there it is, our lovely green whisk. Um, I'm just going to check. Yeah, okay. So uh, our scale was having a touch of trouble. Uh, it said that we were at 80. Well, we were at 78, and now it is saying we're at 86. So let me go with this measurement now and just scoop off and back into the tin. Till, okay, there we go. I'm going to say that's 80. Ah. Okay, cool. Cool. Move everyone to the side while I whisk this together. Oh, yeah. So, fun fact about this mixture currently. What isn't sugar in this mixture is fat. I mean, it's going to turn out delicious because it, it's brownies. Um... So, what comes next? Oh, the espresso powder and the vanilla go into this lovely mixture. So, we're going to do, ooh, wow, that's a big splash of vanilla. Um, and then a teaspoon of the espresso powder. Um, I'm thinking about it, and the longer we go on in the show, the more I really don't... Uh, I think I need to do the uh, raspberry thing. Wow, really losing. Okay, so this is half a teaspoon. So we're gonna do um, our two there. So that'll equal a teaspoon. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna worry about the uh, raspberry thing. Um, if you want to see me make it, I made it from actual uh, frozen raspberries episode uh the dessert episode of kitchen time which is uh on instagram live at SESU dems if you wanted to see it um very simple i just popped uh the raspberries in with an orange juice and uh some sugar in a pot let them go mashed it up strained it and uh boom the raspberry thing would be is an even easier honestly you could probably pop it in the microwave and it'll be fine uh you just have to do that every time you want to make this. Uh, use the sauce, at least. Um, sorry, whenever I go quiet, it's because I'm either drinking, thinking, or um, counting. Which I guess is a part of thinking. So, what I'm just trying to figure out right now is the uh, next step in this, which I believe is the eggs. So, we're going to do that. So, we're going to need six eggs in total. Um, yeah, we're going to employ our lovely egg glass so we know we're not getting any, um, shards. So we're going to do, what did I just say? Four eggs. So four whole eggs, and we're going to do two just yolks. So I almost broke my own rule there. Okay. Go into the bin. One egg. Um, so the reason I'm doing it one egg at a time is because if I do all four eggs in here and on the fourth egg, I get a load of shell in there and I decide to toss the egg, I'm tossing out four eggs, which is just a waste. Um, third egg. Um, yeah. Oh, the egg in the shell thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, want to learn a cool trick? This is how you crack an egg with one hand. You get it so it's really nice and cracked, and then you just kind of form a three-fingered little thing, and you just kind of squeeze a little and pull your fingers apart at the same time. And you get that cool one-handed uh, crack and open the chef, the egg chef sort of thing. It's not faster; it just looks neat. Alexa, how much time is left on the cake timer?
she said six minutes. So, I'm hoping... You know, I will do the raspberry thing. So we have time for, to let this bake and let the cake cool. Um, that was four. That was four. And we're going to do two of the yolks. Oh, no, this is four. <laughs> okay. So, for the yolks, all we're going to do is... Uh, I'm going to separate it using my hand. So, it's going to crack it open. Let the gross white part fall through. Um... Would I use a bigger bowl for this? Yes. You can also kind of help it by just pulling on it a little. Um, you could also kind of use your fingers to pinch it. There we go. So that's uh, the one. And then two. You can also do it the weird thing where you like bring it back and forth in between the two shells. But I feel like that leads to a lot a better chance of a yolk perforation, which is something... I don't want to deal with. There we go. Okay, so that's our two yolks. Okay, I'm going to wash my eggy hands. Oh, if you could smell what's going on right now, it's delicious. Um, now, with the egg whites, you could totally, totally uh, freeze them and then use them for a later thing. Or if you want to go all rocky about it, you can just kind of toss it back. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pour it down the drain. I know I said the thing about wasting an egg. However, um, I'm a hypocrite. What can I say? Okay, so <laughs> we're going to mix this all together. Um, mix it all together. Let's let it sit. Yep, okay. And then we're going to do um, do our next bit okay, of uh, additions into this. So we're going to start off with our 80 grams of cocoa. Uh, I didn't sip that. Oh, well. Um, is it going to ruin this, these brownies? No. Uh, would it have made it taste a little bit better? Probably. Um, this is getting really thick, so I'm actually going to switch over to a, uh, a spoon. I always liked saying that, uh, spoon. It's uh, a reference to Bruce Almighty. That's the movie name. Uh, when he's uh, he knew, just got his powers and he's like, he's sitting in the diner and he's like, waitress, waitress, because she didn't bring him a spoon. So he goes, can I get a spoon? And he pulls one out of his mouth because he's a god. He's god now. Great movie. Not transphobic at all, like um, Ace Ventura. Oh, that used to be my favorite movie. Um, well, one of my favorite movies. I love Jim Carrey. Uh, still do. Uh, they have a lovely bit about that last scene in Ace Ventura in uh, the Netflix documentary... Uh, Oh boy. Hold on. Disclosure. That's the one. It's disclosure. They have a great bit about it. Um, the guy, Zeke, from uh, Survivor fame, talks about how like that was his favorite scene and then a movie, and then he watched that when he was like about to come out. I don't know, you just changed his whole uh, perception of the movie. All right. Ooh, she's getting nice and thick. That's a disgusting sound. I am so sorry if anyone heard that. Wow. <laughs> that was not a nice sound. Um, there we go. Okay. We have this lovely thick batter Ooh, ooh, that's good um we're gonna be adding more to it so we're gonna do um 118 grams or milliliters grams and milliliters the same thing it just confuses me when i use both in the same recipe and since they're interchangeable i just decide to go with uh grams so 
we're going to do 118 grams slash milliliters vegetable oil. Um, if you're like me, you'll keep your vegetable oil in a cute little squeezy bottle. If not, you're going to have a harder time with this. So we're going to tear it out or zero it out. We're going to do 118 grams. Um, funny story about this, uh, the uh, vegetable oil. Um, I keep a lot of things in these <laughs> squeezy bottles. Um, oh, 122. Uh, hmm. Nah, it's going to be fine. Uh, funny thing, I keep a lot of various liquids in uh, those squeezy bottles. And I always label them. But sometimes when I have friends over and we start drinking, those bottles and labels all kind of look the same. So if you end up putting, you know, we're making a cocktail with simple syrup and someone ends up putting a nice floater of vegetable oil, vegetable oil in their cocktail. Ooh, uh, Alexa, stop the timer. Cool, so our cake is done, which is uh, about damn perfect timing. Um, Although we still need to finish our brownies. Here, let me uh, switch y'all so you can see the beautiful brownies when they come out. Right. Oh, it smells delicious. Absolutely delicious. Okay. There we go. Ooh, a little bit of steam. Oh, beautiful, gorgeous. Okay. We're not going to turn our oven off because we're going to pop um brownies in there once we're done this is what she looks like right now i know hard to see we're gonna let it cool while we finish the brownies um so i'll, I'll see you guys over at the, the vegetation station welcome back um we're stirring in slowly and carefully our oil into our lovely brownie mixture let me just toss that whisk in there for nothing okay uh i am gonna stick with this working very cautiously and very slowly we're gonna mix this in um it's gonna take a hot second because you know oil and uh, uh you know very thin mixture very thick mixture kind of coming together into a state of homogeneity Wow, I can't speak tonight. Homogen, you you want a homogenous mixture? Oh boy. Okay, there we go. See, it all came together. There we go. Okay, um, you don't have to worry about over mixing this, because that's kind of what we want. Um, yeah, so that we need a teaspoon of salt and baking powder, not baking soda. They're different can't remember exactly how exactly they're different um but they're different just trust me uh and salt okay going back in for our uh you heard nothing i'm gonna wash these off Okay, I did, I did watch these off. Um, okay, we're gonna do a teaspoon. Um, it's gonna dry the teaspoon off a lot better. Okay, so we have our teaspoon of the baking soda, and we're gonna do a teaspoon of salt. I know I just said that, but I like to double check myself sometimes I'll read, especially when I'm doing two recipes, I'll read the wrong recipe and then end up putting like a ridiculous amount of something into one thing and not the other. And uh, it'll throw off the whole recipe. So that goes there, that goes there. Um, what do I have left? Oh, yeah. Uh, hundred. So this recipe does have flour. It originally called for bread flour. I didn't want to go out and buy a whole new uh, thing of flour. I have enough all-purpose flour. 
So I'm just going to use that. It's not going to form the gluten. Uh, th this flour is not... Uh, so bread flour, let me start over. Bread flour has a much higher protein content than this all-purpose flour. So we're at zero grams. We need to get 188. Oh, wow. That was uh, 65... 86. What did I say? 188. Okay. Just... Huh, 157. Oh, 187. I'll take that. Okay. This is also going to be a hard part. Mixing a lot of dry ingredients into a lot of wet ingredients. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to do this. We're on this journey. So we're just going to slowly work in the center. Um, yeah, just bring it around town. Uh, we're going to fold it in. Um, there's a great joke about that. What does folding in mean on uh, Schitt's Creek? Uh, they're making enchiladas, and Moira has the recipe, and she's like, fold the cheese in, David. And David's like, I don't know how to fold it in. How, what do you mean? Do I break it in half? Um, makes me giggle. Okay, so now it's coming together. Okay beautiful gorgeous i might chop up some of this chocolate and um some of this left over like the three squares that i have over here and put it back in um so this is done the batter at least am i gonna add more chocolate yeah of course come on so for this we're gonna do the same rough kind of chop that we did put in uh, when we first started this recipe. Um, this is also our first episode to go over an hour. I'm very proud of myself that I have uh, correctly chosen recipes that take more than uh, an hour. Okay, let me just wipe this up with some paper towels. Okay. I just didn't want the uh, eggyness to get on the chocolate. Okay, so we're just gonna um, break that into our squares and just kind of shave it. Um, you know what? I'm actually gonna leave it like this in these really large chunks. There we go, okay. Yeah, just these big old bits um, some of the smaller pieces will melt and make this extra ooey gooey. Um, and some of these will still stay semi-solid. And then when this firms up in about an hour after baking, um, the, it's going to be some delightful textural differences between the big chunks of chocolate and this very ooey gooey melty batter. Oh yeah. I'm going to go... Well, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to into these cabinets to find a uh, mixing a uh, pan. Ooh. Oh, hey, you can still see me. Okay. Um, I want big brownies, big, delicious, chunky brownies. So I'm gonna take out this uh, nice blue pan. Okay. Yeah, just this blue baking dish. Um, eight by eight, maybe? Kind of? I don't know. Um, for this, oh, I got chocolate in my face. I just know it. Um, we're going to kind of do two different methods of not uh, keeping everything from sticking. I'll... I'm going to talk to you guys face-to-face -face for this. 
So we're going to kind of do two different ways of making sure this doesn't stick to the pan. Um, one, we're going to flour and butter it. Two, we're also going to kind of make a sling out of parchment paper. Um, that's why I was pointing here. Uh, parchment paper so that we can kind of airlift it out of the pan once it's done. Chocolate on my face? No, okay, I'm good. So, let me do that now. Um, see you guys back over in the, uh, on the bench. Ah, okay. So, that, okay. I just want barely enough. We're not going to do, uh, we're not going to do the whole craft, uh, thing. We're going to do that. We're going to put some butter and uh, flour down first. Okay. We have this, we have a little tiny pat of butter in our fridge right now. So I'm going to use this and you're just going to really get in the corners and get everywhere you can with it. Um, this pan has some little nodules on the bottom of it, some little diamondy star shapes. So it's going to leave an imprint on our brownies, but it doesn't really matter to me. I don't mind. Okay. And then we're just going to do the sides. Okay. Um, cool. I'm going to wash my uh, buttery hands. Okay. So now we're going to do a little bit of flour. Uh, there we go. I have my scoop in there. This is actually a scooper from a uh, protein powder thingy. Um, it's good. I like these. Uh, they deliver enough flour. Um, doing, I saw a really ingenious idea where they put it in like a, uh, uh, a little uh, powdered sugar shaker sort of thing. Yeah, we're just gonna kind of slap it all around and really get the flour to cover every little bit that we can. I'm actually gonna put a bowl here and I'm gonna try to get the sides as best I can at least. Okay, cool. Um, for the sides that are like really, the flour that's really stuck in there for some reason, um, I'm just gonna you know, shake it out. Cool. Um, All righty. So we're going to take out this spatula and we're going to start pouring. Um, once I start pouring, it's going to hold this plastic wrap in place. Oh yeah, just like this. And then whatever the plastic wrap doesn't cover the flour and butter mixture are going to kind of hold it together. Uh, so there we go. It's a thick batter. So you're going to have to kind of uh, mangle it and maneuver it the way you want. Um, you could totally do like a nine by 13, which is those really long traditional brownie pans. Um, I just really like a big old thick brownie. Oh, this is so good. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to kind of maneuver it into the place we want. Um, I'm going to go half an hour on this just because I'm sure this was never the pan it was meant to go in. Mm. Ab oh, God, absolutely delicious. Mm. Desserts are a great way to like 
if you've never cooked before, to get into baking, um, let me switch over to base cam. Um, a great way to like get into cooking, um, because the ingredients don't usually cost that much. I mean, if you're going to start like with cooking, those ingredients usually cost more and you're going to need more, um, spices alone. If you want the good ones, you're going to have to pay up a little bit more. Um, so this is our big, beautiful brownie batter. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh boy. Why are we so out of focus? Hi, bud. Hey. Oh. All right. Well, hmm. I don't know why that's so out of focus. All right. So we're going to pop that in. Okay. Um, this one was, uh, 30 minutes. I'm gonna, I'm going to set it for 30 minutes, but I'm also going to check it at, uh, I'm going to set two alarms. I'm going to do one at 30 minutes and then another at 45. Um, in the meantime, we'll make the, uh, raspberry sauce. Um, cause I, I, I want you guys to see what the brownies are going to look like when they come out of the oven. Um, I need something. Oh, a pan. Duh. To cook the, yeah. Like, like I said, all the brain power tonight. Um, we're going to use a teeny tiny pot. Um, we're going to put the teeny tiny pot on the teeny tiny burner. Okay. Um. I'm just making space for you guys to come and have a look-see. Oh boy, this is going to be uh, challenging because I just kind of turned on the wrong thing. Okay. There we go. Hey. All right. There you go. Um, can I move you closer? Sure. Why not? Okay. Focus on the pan, not my trash. I mean, I did just get out. Okay, cool. So, you can also keep watch on our lovely little flowerless chocolate cake. Um, fun fact, this has a couple of names. Um, in Italian, it's like torta uh, something. Um, and in the Swedish, it's called Kladkaka, which is objectively a very funny name. Um... We're gonna see the grip strength in action. Oh yeah, strong. Um, I have this fun little spatula that I almost never use, except for this and in, in this specific circumstance, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, oh, it's actually kind of, all right. Well, we're gonna just do a little sweep around the jar to loosen it up. Oh yeah, perfect. Um, you. These jars are also glass. Um, I pop this. I pop this one in the dishwasher, and uh, I use this for my laundry. So I put like, not that this is a laundry channel. Um, I put those little like scent beads. Oh, did I put the wrong one on? I did. There we go. Back one. That's the one that's hot. Um, I put those little like scent booster things in the bottom, and then I put the uh, little laundry pods on top, and I just throw this in my laundry basket when I go down because that's just easier to, when you live in a dorm slash I guess an apartment too so yeah this is just gonna uh, cook down and kind of loosen up I'm gonna add a bit of uh, something something I say something something I know I'm I, I, I mean something uh, orange juice. Wow. A chaotic episode for tonight. Yeah, uh, watch the cake and the raspberry thing. Uh, there we go. All right. Orange juice and, uh, yeah. Um, I... I wish you all could be here 
to see <laughs> the spy maneuvers that I have to do to uh, get to th this spot in the kitchen. Um, it's very funny. Okay, cool. Uh, this is just going to thin it out. Then we'll reduce it into a lovely little sauce. Um, the citrus from the acidity from the citrus and the orange juice is really going to brighten this up. Um, because when you make jam or you know, jelly, whatever this one specifically was, jam, jelly, preserves, if you're fancy, um, you kind of lose some of that brightness. So we're bringing it back with uh, the orange juice. If you didn't have orange juice, um, you could totally use a lime, a lemon, even a little bit of citric acid if you had it. Um, I have some on hand because we did gummy worms a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago. Um, and I wanted to do like the whole sour gummy worm thing and it just didn't arrive on time. So now I have a bag of uh, citric acid just sitting in my kitchen. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'll think of something. Um, for those of you who really enjoy Kitchen Time, there will be no new episode this week because I'm doing tech for the Student One Acts. And my schedule every day, Monday to Friday, is uh, this week, is going to be 5 to 10. I'm doing tech. So, or uh, 6 to 10. 6 to 10, I'll be doing tech. Um, so I, I wish I could do... <laughs> kitchen time at a theater um but uh that's not yet uh, th that's just uh that just wouldn't happen um unless i bring like a hot plate and some ramen um but no so there's just not going to be an episode this week and then next week is going to be our final episode of kitchen time um Izzy will be graduating, we'll be leaving for the summer, um, and um, so that'll be the end of Kitchen Time. It will not be the end of this channel. I will continue to do this, um, whether it's, you know, kind of a late night stream like this, a morning stream like maybe what will happen tomorrow morning or what happened last week, uh, last weekend, I should say. Um, Sometimes it'll be just me. Sometimes I'll have a guest. Yeah. Um, the fun thing about our May 5th episode, it's going to be Cinco de Mayo because it kind of falls on that holiday and we did the same thing with St. Patrick's Day. Um, I lost my train. Oh, yeah. we uh, Izzy and I both got vaccinated at the same place at the same time on the same day. So we're also going to get our second dose of the vaccination on the same, at the same time, at the same place on the same day. So we'll be two days post, uh, second dose of, uh, I think we both got Pfizer. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any suggestions for what our, I say our, um, me, what we can cook, as in I'm cooking on the stream, you guys are watching and helping me along, um, let me know, we already, I already have a few in mind, um, I would love for them to be longer than an hour like this episode is, um, I'm very happy with this, um, this is also my road to the affiliate thing, Twitch affiliate, um, my dream currently is for <laughs> Twitch to pay for these groceries. Um, yeah, so to do that, I'm going to need to stream for seven different days, which I've already done. And I need to reach uh, 50 followers, which I need to do. And um, I need to get like three average viewers per stream, uh, with, <laughs> which will come with the, the 50 followers. Okay. So we have our lovely uh, sauce, 
thinned out, warmed up. Um, like I said, you could probably do this in a microwave and it would be perfectly acceptable uh, to most people. I did this in a bowl because... I did this in, on the stove because um, microwave cooking just isn't, like, fun and sexy. Uh, and also, this just kind of looks better for uh, you guys. Uh, let me clean up just a wee bit. Um, was I was going to do something. Oh, yeah. We have to strain this because there's a hell of a lot of seeds in there. Um very important to do it in a heat proof bowl because this mixture very very hot the thing you're pouring into if it's not heat resistant will melt and uh yeah that would that would be very sad um also a gigantic mess some hot raspberry just sauce it's a little leaking everywhere um doesn't sound like a great grand old time um, we also want to strain this into a bowl so that it has more surface area so that it can cool faster so we don't burn our mouths on it when we uh, take a bite. Or uh, this is great in cocktails. Um, I'm going to try to carefully uh, strain this. Yeah, I mean, just look at all those seeds that are already in there. Um, yeah. Um, I'll probably put this back into the jar it came in, just because I think that'll be easier for storage. Um, seeds are in the way. You can always, like, give it a little, a little stir with, oh, yeah, there's a little stir with the uh, spatula. There we go. We'll take this and we'll, um, there we go, put a little hand on it. And, uh, this is going to go in our butter, butter cup. Okay. We're going to pour a little bit more, repeat the same process. There we go. Uh, this is already, a, this is a lovely, lovely sauce. Um, yeah, you could use any jam really. This was just on sale. Um, and I really dig the glass jars because plastic is very, very bad for the environment. So I'm trying not to use plastic as much. Um, this bowl is actually made from bamboo. Fun fact. Um, so I'm going to put a little thing on it so we're not dripping across the kitchen. Oh, cool. Yeah. That, and then go back to this. Okay. Perfect. We're going to have a little... Stir. Um, if you wanted to make this a really, really thick sauce, you could uh, keep it on the burner and just let it reduce until it's super thinned out. Uh, not thin. Super uh, gooey, I guess would be a word. Um, I want this to be a little thinner. Um, so it's more pourable. So it looks nicer. And there we go. Cool. Um, you could also do this with a, a, all the different jams. Um, you could do this with blueberry, mix with all the things. Even like apricot or peach jam would be uh, really dope in this. Um, I didn't use blueberry because I'm actually allergic to blueberry. Um, like real blueberry, not like the fake blueberry. Um, Brisk does a blueberry, like, lemonade iced tea thing. Um, I don't think that thing has ever been near a blueberry. Um, and stuff like that. I mean, it's whatever. Okay, that's officially done with that. We have our lovely sauce, which looks really um, Halloween-like, I guess is the word I'll use. Um... Ooh, yeah, that's delicious. The orange juice really brightened that up. Okay, let's see. So we have 16 minutes left on our timer. Well, our first timer. So I'm going to plate up 
the flatterless chocolate cake, cloud caca, whatever you want to call it. For this show, I called it flatterless chocolate cake. To my friends, I called it cloud caca <laughs> because every time I say that, I smile. <laughs> um, so you're going to take your smallest knife, which for me happens to be this little number, a little paring knife from Walmart. And we're just going to round the pan to loosen it up. Um, you can like drag it around or you can do this little thing that I'm doing. Um, I'm actually going to see my uh, dad and stepmother and grandmother tomorrow. So I'll probably bring this because um, if I leave it here, I'm going to eat it all. Um, oh, and we're going to kind of cut this like a pizza. Um, there we go. If your pizza person was really bad at cutting. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. So this kind of had to cool for a little bit more, but oopsie daisy life will go on. So I'm going to take this piece. Oh boy. It's really falling apart. Um, hmm. All right. Well, hmm. Listen, it doesn't always work out. I am a big proponent of that. Um, and this is a lovely learning opportunity of, uh, well, I'm not really sure what a learning opportunity I can take from this. However, this still tastes amazing. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably pop that in the fridge tonight. Or a freezer even. Really let it firm up. But I mean, taste, amazing. Is it the prettiest thing to look at? No. Um, however, we learned with the biscuits and gravy episode that we did uh, last week. It doesn't matter if it's the prettiest thing. If it tastes amazing, that's all you care about. So we're going to do um, some raspberry. We're going to get a little Jackson Pollocky with it. Um, there. Oh, beautiful. <clears throat> um, you know what? Just to make it a little fancier. Not fancier. Um, prettier looking. Um, we're going to add some whipped cream. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, usually I whip my whipped cream by, by hand, but um, I, I have this laying around. So I'm gonna <laughs> use this instead, um, cause that'll be nice and easy. Okay. Um, this is still warm, so it's probably just gonna melt off immediately. However, uh, you oh, you also have to uh, just a little bit. For the chef. Yeah. So. Is this the prettiest thing in the world? No. I'll admit it. However. Does it taste good? Which is the real question I care about. I don't care if it looks ugly. The biscuits and gravy <laughs> looked awful. However. The flavor. Delicious. Okay. So. Hmm. You know, I never understood why uh, at the end of the show people would, uh, like chefs, would turn have the camera on them as they ate. I always found that really weird. This is delicious. It's really rich. Um, this would probably be like a one piece per person sort of thing. Um... And that's totally not a bad thing. It's just really, really rich. This is a dessert. Um, how do I describe this? It kind of needs milk to go along with it. Like there are some cookies where you're like eating it. And you're like, oh, this really needs milk. That's what this kind of dessert is. Um, 
it's just kind of there and it sticks with you. Saying that, absolutely delicious. Um, we have 11 minutes left on our timer. Um, huh. You know, I could work better on, more, work more on the uh, spacing out of these things and the timing. Hmm. Mm. No, I'm going to grab milk. I think that'll uh, help. Well, not help. One of my favorite things about living in a dorm um, and the fact that both me and my roommate drink different kinds of milk is that we each get our own. So... I get to do the thing my mother hates, which is a drink directly from the cart. Um, I love it. It doesn't waste a glass. Oh, perfect. All right. Um... <clears throat> I'll probably end up putting that raspberry sauce into um, a squeeze bottle. And all I do, um, I pick this, I pick this up from, hey, how close are you? Oh boy, you're real close. Hey there. Um, there we go. Oh boy, you can only see like, I'm trying to get this right. That'll do. Um, my hair, hair is a mess because uh, we wear these mics that like sit right here and then I have the mic over here with the thing. And because they're kind of one size fit all, they just kind of, they feel like they're just squeezing your head constantly. Um, so I've been wearing this hat to kind of circumvent the pressure a little. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, the labeling thing. Um, I just have a piece of, uh, painter's tape. Uh, I get it colorful. I have blue and then I have pink. Uh, this is called happy tape. And then I just write it on a Sharpie, stick it on the thing. So that way, uh, for like frozen foods, I know when I put it in there. Um, so I usually label it, date it, and, uh, park it in the fridge. It's also good because I put most things in squeeze bottles that can go in squeeze bottles. So it's always good to know what's what. Um, I'll do the typical TV chef thing of, uh, the eating while, like, staring down your audience. Mmm. Mmm. So good. The, um, outer ring that was in contact with our cake pan. Really crunchy and chewy. And then as you work your way into the middle, real soft and gooey. So kind of the perfect brownie. If you like both things, you can get both in one piece. Um, yeah. So, how are you guys? Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna check on the uh, our lovely brownies. Okay. We're going to let these go for the full 30, and then we'll pull them out. Um, I'm going to grab both gloves. I have enough glove. I'm going to grab both, because uh, it's a heavy lady in there. Yeah, we're looking for, like, just a little bit of jiggliness in the center. Um, and then, eventually, they'll set up real nice and pretty. Um... Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a stream tomorrow morning because I'm going to want to sleep in. Yeah, so I don't think there's going to be a stream tomorrow morning. So that means the next time you'll be seeing me is, huh, is, uh, I'll update the schedule. I'll tweet it out. Um, yeah, there's going to be no quick kitchen time this week. 
unless, of course, Izzy and uh, our producer Paula decide to do one without me, which I'm completely fine with. Um, if they do that, then there will be a one. Um, I don't know if it'll be on Twitch because this is my own personal Twitch account. Um, yeah. Have you noticed I'm just killing time waiting for my phone to buzz? Um, yeah. So, we have five minutes. Five more minutes. Um, then I'll pull the brownies. You can, we'll both take a look at them together as a unit, as a family. Um, and then that'll be the end of the stream. So, well, I'll check. I'll check now. All right. I'm going to pull them. I'm saying that as a question. I'm going to pull them. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Oven off. It's always a good thing to do. Remember to turn off your ovens. Okay. Let's take a look. You ready? I'm ready. Ready? Oh. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. Um, here, let me move that. And I'll move you forward. move you back there you go okay so as you can see super jiggly in the center um that's gonna set up beautifully into this really chewy almost gum like texture that i love in a brownie um and then of course the edges have kind of set up uh so you get that nice crunch on the edge uh so with that thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Wicked Kitchen. Um, I will see you guys sometime in the next week, maybe, possibly. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Next time. Mm -hmm.